Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe, I uh, had had a dream about 1 Peter 5.8. In the dream, I was saying 1 Peter 5.8, and Brother Lee finished it in my dream. Well, that morning, Brother JJ was having some issues he was dealing with. There's nothing wrong with having issues as a Christian as long as you can call to a brother and whoever and say, hey, man, I need prayer. I'm dealing with this. And a lot of times I'm going to talk about tonight in dealing with the temptation and the tempter. There's things we go through in our life. There's a lot of different issues we may have in our life from our past. We got to battle with occasionally that shows up and rears its head and we got to win one more time, right? But there's a lot of times things do show up as a Christian that we're still struggling with. And a lot of people don't like to admit that. But there's things we still struggle with occasionally. Amen? Yeah. Would you guys agree with that? <clears throat> Go to 1 Peter 5.8. Throughout the Bible, you're going to see like Satan tempted Eve to question God. You add Cain. I mean, he came with his offering and it was bad. And of course, it went bad for him as well, killing his brother. You've got and David who numbered Israel. And it says that Satan kind of tempted him to do that. And you have Satan who tempted Jesus in the wilderness, right? He tempted him. You have Ananias and Sapphira, men who were tempted for that money to hang on to some extra cash. They lied to the Holy Spirit. Throughout the Bible, you're going to see where Satan's name is used even for Judas to go and go down and get the money. He was tempted in his heart. His heart was bad. But Jesus already knew that, of course. But here's the verse we're going to start with, okay? Man, you guys ready? Brother Lee, would you lead us in prayer tonight before we start? <coughs> You guys ready? This here's the New King James Version. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Did you guys hear that? Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, perfect perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Be sober. That just doesn't mean alcohol. It means your mind. Everything in your mind that comes between these ears. And it doesn't always start with you. It could be something you see, something somebody does, something somebody says, and it comes in through your ear gates, and what happens? You got the wrong thought. You may not have put it there, but all of a sudden you're having to process it and deal with it. And how you deal with that is the final result, right? And if we grab onto some thought that's not a good thought and we start to obsess over that thought, and years back it may have been a sinful way for us, and we grab onto it and start to hang on to it, what's going to happen? We're going to start grabbing that rope and pulling ourselves back into that old pit we were in, right? We're going to go right back to it, one little step at a time. <clears throat> so anyway... Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he's a roaring lion, and seek, and seek in whom he may devour. And know the devil's not everywhere at once. But there is demons and little devils that are everywhere at once. They are. I mean, there are people who have devils in them who will come up and say something, or get something going, or bring some drugs, or do something you don't want in your life that show up, right? They show up and cause issues. They do. They'll try and come back into your life and stir things up you don't want around. I mean, go to uh, 1 John 5.18. 1 John 5.18. And we're going to read verses 18, 19, 20, and 21. We'll get going through this in just a second. And a lot of people don't believe there's a devil. There is darkness. We're going to share that in Ephesians. There is evil that we battle with. There is darkness, principalities, and things in high places that we have to deal with. There is. They're there. They're there. A lot of people don't believe it. And you can and walk around with blinders all you want, but we deal with an enemy that's for real. Yes, we have the victory, but there will be times you feel like the whole world's coming in from every different direction. Why are all these things happening all the time? There's a tormentor who's going to come in and try and break you down, and so you lose your faith. Right? <clears throat> We're going to start in verse, uh, 1 John 5.18. We know that no children of God keep on sinning, for the Son of God does what? He keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. 
We know that we belong to God even though the whole world is under want. The rule of the evil. I mean, can you see that outside these doors? You see darkness and you see it going on. You have discernment now. I mean, you've got God's eyes and you're looking at things going. Before you have God's eyes, you were caught up in a lot of stuff and didn't even see it, smell it, hear it. Your heart was wrong, right? At one time, we were involved in these things and didn't even know it, really. Then we finally came to our senses and said, I'm going to repent of this stuff. It's bad, right? I don't have any peace. I'm suffering here. It's horrible. I don't want to deal with this, right? <clears throat> we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we know the true God. We live in union with the true God, in union with the Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and this is eternal life. Amen? Let's look at, uh, and little children, keep yourself from idols is the last verse. Now let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. There is a God of this world. Would you guys agree that the Bible declares that there is a God of this world? The Bible declares there's a God of this world. We're going to read it once he gets it to come back up. Yeah, we've had some issues with that little guy over there. That's the GNT. You want to switch it to... Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. So we're going to look at 4.4. Four. We're going to look at this one. We can start in, in 3. But even if the gospel is veiled, man, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has done what? Has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, but who is the image of God, it should shine on them, right? Amen? There is a God of this world. I'll turn your Bibles to Ephesians 6, chapter, or uh, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. <clears throat> yeah, many years ago, I didn't believe in... Uh, demons, devils, all that sort of stuff. I really didn't believe that they existed, but I've seen manifestations. Me and Cody and Danny has seen it. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen it where things show up that are just dark. They're dark, they're evil. You go to someone's house, you pray over somebody, man, you see the lights blow out as you're praying, windows bust, light bulbs, and explode. Smells emitting off of people like sulfur. I kid you not, and they're speaking languages you don't know. Or I'm talking bizarre things happen. And things manifest that you've never seen. It does truly happen. We do fight evil all the time. We have the victory, church. We do have the victory. Man, we don't walk around, oh, we're not scared. But the thing is, we do battle. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Stand against the wild... Stop there. Schemes. He's a schemer. The devil will go back to the things that used to battle. The things you used to have problems with, and those will be the things he tries to bring back a lot of times. Right? Would you guys agree? Whatever broke you down, whatever caused a lot of pain, right? All those little things you had issues with will be the same little things that try and rear their heads again. They're trying to creep their way back in. Little bitty things, right? For me, it's this way. <clears throat> verse number 12 wants to say, if we do not wrestle against what? But against what? Against powers. Where'd we go? We lost. It's all right. <clears throat> That's all right. All right. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual host of wickedness, right? In the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to want. Withstand in the evil day. I mean, you may have a good week this week going good, but next week there may come a day with something you haven't dealt with in three years, and all of a sudden it rears its head. Are, are you prepared for it? Whatever you dealt with before, man, what if something rears its head from the past? Are you ready for it? Are you mentally ready with the Lord in your heart? Ready, right? <clears throat> we have to guard our hearts at all times. We have to be careful, right? We do. We have an adversary who wants to come in. He wants to take our faith, step on it, man, so we run back to all those things we used to do. He wants us to quit, right? And it all starts with a little, man, justifying a little bit of sin. Well, I'm going to justify this little bit of sin here. I'm going to rationalize this little bit of sin, right? Does that happen? And that sin grows and it turns into what for us? Death. Right? <clears throat> Therefore, take up the whole armor of God 
that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand there for men, having girded your waist with what? That's the Bible right there, folks. But who's the truth? But Jesus says, I'm what? The way, the truth, and the life, right? And Jesus says he's truth, but his word is truth, right? And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of what? The gospel, that's what saves us right here. And sometimes we have to tell ourselves this again. I got saved because I believe in his finished work and what he's done. He saved me from all this drama. I got saved from this. I don't want to go back to it again, right? When it tries to come. <coughs> Here's the biggest verse in this whole section. Let me go up just a little bit. Above all, if folks read this with me, taking the shield of what? Right here. <coughs> the shield. Taking the shield of faith with which, man, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yes, the enemy will shoot at you. You'll have a perfect day going on. I'm talking, you got the joy of the Lord. You're worshiping. Something just happened. You may have had a miracle praying over somebody. And before you get home, you got a battle waiting for you at the door, right? Has that happened to us, Cody? And we saw a lady get raised from the dead one night. By the time we got home, we had fights waiting on us at both our homes. We were like all the way home celebrating. Man, that lady got raised from the dead. Five days dead, brain dead. We're going home. We're like, yeah, God, just we're excited. We got home and he called me and I said, hey, well, oh, man, I got an argument here. I got one here too. Before we, we got home and both of us, I was so excited to go share, but there was an argument. I was like, one is going on. And then me went to my house before I got there. And he said, I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm going to cause you some problems. For both of us, the same night, I was like, what is going on? I and mean, we got a taste, right? The enemy man, does not want you to walk in faith, man. And the enemy doesn't want you out there sharing Jesus, does he? Why? Because people may get saved. People may get set free, right? And take up the helmet of salvation and what? The sword of the Spirit, which is what? All right, we're going to find out about Jesus, how he responds, Right? Faith and the Word of God, right? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying when? <clears throat> with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for who? We're supposed to pray for each other. If God prompts you to pray for a brother or sister, maybe send them something or scripture or let them know you're thinking about them for whatever reason, and the Lord puts you on their mind. And that morning, when J.J. called me the other day, or he didn't call me, sent out a text. <clears throat> I think it was Brooks sent it up. And it was my fault, because I'd had a dream about it. That verse, he was struggling with an issue, same issue I've struggled with before, 15 years clean in Jesus' name. But I can tell you this, I should have sent it out, and I didn't. We were doing something else. I was going to send it. I looked it up. I found it. I was going to send it out on a little picture one. And about an hour later, I get a call or whatever. And I'm like, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'd had a dream. It was me, JJ, and Cody. And Lee were up on the stage. We were all up here talking. I brought the verse up and Lee finished it. And I woke up and I said, oh man, 1 Peter 5, 8, blah, blah, blah. And later on in the day, man, JJ's having an issue. And I'm like, he was up here <laughs> on the stage with me. So I sent it out after that. But the Lord lets us know, man, when our brothers need prayers, he was letting me know, man, you need to pray for Cody and Lee and yourself. And all four of you up here are going through a battle this week. Pray. You know, and it's not always the same thing for all of us. It could be something different. We all have struggles in different areas. When you may not be an addict or used to be an addict or whatever, it may be porn or it may be pride or it may be anger or resentment or unforgiveness. It could be anything that you're dealing with, right? But you need to reach out to your brothers and sisters when the Lord prompts you to pray for somebody. They're probably struggling. We're all a body. We're all intertwined, right? If something's going on with my brother, it should affect me in a way enough to pick up a phone or send a scripture or something or start praying for them. Amen? There's power in prayer. Would you agree? When we all pray together and believe, heaven moves on our behalf, does it not? 
<coughs> so verse 19, and for me that utterance may be given to me, and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen. For which I am one an ambassador and change that in it I may speak boldly as I to speak. Amen. Let's see if I kept going on this one or not. Now let's go to Matthew 4. We're going to take a look at Jesus here. We're going to find out who led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted for his faith to be tested. But look at Job. And what did Job do? <laughs> what did Job do? He sure got humbled, didn't he? All of his kids, all of his property, all of his flock, and he's got boils all over him. He looks horrible. Everybody he knows besides his wife are dead, and all of his friends are all, man, it must be your fault. Man, you did all this. And Nope, the enemy was allowed to come in and go after him. But he would never curse God and die, would he? He did not lose his faith. But at the end, man, he was trying to question God on a few things. And the Lord's all, man, did you do this? Did you do this? Did... <laughs> He's like, no, you didn't do none of that stuff. So he got kind of humbled, but he got his stuff back and some other things back. But at the same time, man, sometimes we go through stuff and we don't know why. But there may be a testing going on. And God's allowing a testing, Right? Look at Peter. Satan wanted to sift him, right? Satan wants to sift you. And we're going to find out what happened with that. <coughs> Listen up. Verse number one, what's that say? Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be what? The Holy Spirit led him out into the wilderness so he could be tempted. You guys see that? A lot of people will come up here, they get saved, they get baptized in the water. They're excited about the Lord, and within about two weeks, all hell breaks loose at their house, and they're wondering why there's all these problems. Well, you just said you're one of the Lord's, right? <laughs> and the enemy's going to come in and try and take their legs out. So you better come back over here and do this, right? And then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness and tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. And yeah, most of the time, what happens? When you're at your weakest, you're sick... You're tired, you haven't had any sleep, you might be out of a job, something's going on, what happens? Kick them while they're down, right? Kick them while they're down, right? Would you guys agree? People like to slap you around while you're down, don't they? It's like a bunch of sharks smelling blood, they start circling, huh? And the enemy just smashes, wants you to give up. <coughs> now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered what? <laughs> but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God and he responded with Deuteronomy 8 3 did you guys see that he responded with the word of God right okay number five and then the devil man took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of God Throw yourself down, for it is written, and he shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands, and they shall bear you up, unless you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And that's what Deuteronomy 6, 16. He responded again with the word of God, right? He didn't sit and have a conversation about all kinds of stuff going on. He responded with the word. Verse number 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. How many things have you worshipped in your past? You had an idol on your heart. At one time, everybody in this room had an idol. And it may have been yourself. It may have been pride. It may have been unforgiveness. It may have been whatever it was at one time. And you had something else on your heart besides God. He didn't have the number one spot. He refuses to be number two for anybody. He wants the number one spot of your heart. Amen? We're married to him, right? All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, and you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only and shall you serve, right? So one more time he responds to Deuteronomy 6, 13, right? And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I believe one version says, then he left him for that season. You see, he would come back again, right? <coughs> the devil's, like I was saying, he's a schemer. 
In one month, everything's going really good. You're worshiping the Lord. You get up every morning. You're reading your Bible. Things are running smooth. Me, you're sharing the gospel with people. It's beautiful. Things are going good. Then what? Like a curveball shows up out of nowhere, and you're still trying to hit that one. I got to wait on that pitch, right? <laughs> It happens to everybody in this room, and something will show up one day, and you're thinking, what's going on, man? I thought everything was right. Things are going to happen in your walk. Whether you bring it up or the enemy does it, one of the two. But you got to be prepared. You have to be ready for when it comes, because it's going to come. There will come a day that your faith will get tested. Maybe every single day for you, I don't know. It could be your marriage, your job, your kids, relationships, whatever else it is. We good, Cody? Okay. But that's the deal. Every day you can be tested, right? And would you guys agree? Who's married in this room? <laughs> every day, right? I'm not the best husband. I'm not saying that I am. But I know every day, man, there might be something that goes on. You're like, man, I'm frustrated, right? There's things that can get you frustrated quick, huh? It can. Let's look at... Uh, 1 John 3, 4. So Jesus responded with what? The Word. And a lot of times, like J.J., man, something he did was awesome. When you have a weakness, we all have weaknesses, right? We all have weaknesses, but most of us don't want to tell anybody, right? Well, I ain't telling anybody about that weakness. I should have all this figured out, huh? But when you admit you got an area you're struggling with and say, hey, I need some prayer, that's awesome, right? We start standing in the gap and praying together and saying whatever's coming against him. I told him, I said, the day before, man, I was in your place. I was struggling the day before. I was battling with that the day before. But you work through it minute by minute, hour by hour, then it's gone. But that's the thing. That's the enemy trying to show up. The enemy just show up out of nowhere. And you're like, what is going on here? That's what happens. You've been walking with the Lord, been on fire for the Lord. Oh, Lord, I, man, I can't get enough of you, man. I want to tell every, everybody about Jesus, everybody I know. Well, the enemy's going, oh, really? Okay. I'm going to stir something up for you at your house for a little bit, slow you down. That's what the enemy tries to do. And yes, the enemy's for real. I'm telling you guys, the enemy is for real. <clears throat> We're looking at uh, 1 John 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7 looks like an 8. We ready? Whoever commits sin also and commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to do what? To take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. And when you look that word up, and when it's talking about that sin, it means to practice sin. And if you're practicing sin, intentionally going out to sin, and you're doing something going, well, I want to steal this book over here, man. I stole one last week. I'm going to get another one today. I'm going to steal it and walk out with it, right? I mean, you're intentionally doing something. You're intentionally sinning. But if you wouldn't pick this book up and you thought it was yours and it wasn't, and you picked it up and walked out, it's, oh man, I wasn't trying, right? Different story. But I'm saying there's people who wake up and who aren't planning on intentionally sinning and something may come off their lips they shouldn't have said to someone else or something they did they don't normally do but a situation arose that doesn't normally happen or they weren't expecting something to happen, right? And something goes haywire, right? How did it go this way? I wasn't planning on this today, right? Our adversary, right? Be sober-minded. Your mind, right? Your heart. Verse number seven. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who does want... Practices righteousness is righteous, and just as he is righteous, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. If you're walking in sin intentionally, the work of the devil hasn't been destroyed in your life. But if you're walking with Christ and doing everything that you possibly can with the Lord, you believe in Jesus, and you're trying to walk this thing out with all that you got. Nothing wrong with that. There will come a day you'll have a struggle. There just will, right? And don't get all puffed up, man. And take heed lest you stumble yourself. And, oh, man, and that guy over there, man, he fell on that. I would never fall on that, but you may fall on something else. <laughs> I mean, you may have a different area that you're dealing with, right? 
All of us have an area that you may struggle with. We have to admit we have that area. Have a brother or sister, most of the time of the same sex, it's best to call somebody the same sex because you don't want to be calling someone else who's opposite sex and start sharing things you shouldn't be sharing unless you're a pastor or whatever else. Different story. Because you can be having conversations you shouldn't be having, right? But I'm just saying. Have a brother or sister, your wife, whoever, that you can pray with and say, hey, I'm struggling in this area. Would you help me, man? I'm just really struggling. <clears throat> Nine. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Amen? There is a change in us when we die to ourselves, right? There is a brand new change. We go die to ourselves. We get raised anew. We start walking with the Lord. And no, it's not an easy walk, huh, Cody? It's not an easy walk, is it? We'd be lying to you guys if we said it's an easy walk. It's not. Every day you make a choice to serve God and not yourself. It's real easy to serve yourself. It's easy to serve yourself and say, well, I don't want to follow the Lord anymore. I'm tired of that. No, I don't. I want to follow nothing but Jesus my whole life. I never want to go back and feel the pain, the suffering that I went through ever again. I don't even want a taste of it. <laughs> I've been there, done that with suicide. I thought about suicide was going to do it. I've had the worst depression I ever wanted or ever, or not wanted, but had. It was so hard to get over that. But Jesus came in and changed my heart and my life. The peace I was looking for was God's peace and his love. Amen? We can't find it somewhere else. We'll try. But if you want to go back like a dog returning to its vomit and go try and pick that up again, no thanks. <laughs> I don't want to go there again. Right now I got a hedge of the Lord with me. He walks with me. I can say, Father, help me, encourage me, strengthen me, right? But if I'm walking in open sin against God, just intentionally sinning, doing whatever I want to do, man, I can't expect him just to show up on scene. I have to be grieved by my sin if I'm sinning, right? I have to be grieved by it. My heart's got to be broke, man. I've got to have some sorrow if I'm doing something wrong, right? If you don't have any sorrow, you're not going to change. You'll keep doing it. But if you truly believe there's a God and he wants the best for you, he wants the best for us at all times. He does. He wants us all to be saved and grow in him. Amen? Let's look at, uh, <coughs> that was 1 John 3. Let's look at James 4. James 4, we're going to start there. James 4. Look at verse number 1, church. And where do wars and fights come from among you? And do they not come from your desires? For what? For pleasure that war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, and you may spend it on your own pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, and do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns, yearns jealousy, right, going up? But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, man, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen? It's not easy to call someone and say, hey, man, I'm struggling. Right? It's not easy. It's not easy to call someone else. You're not in this fight by yourself, church. You're not by yourself. You're not alone in this battle. You have brothers and sisters who will help hold you up. We're supposed to pray for each other. Remember that? Back in Ephesians? We're supposed to be praying for each other, but a lot of times we won't know something's going on if you don't call your brother or text and say, hey, I'm, you know, I got this going on. I'm struggling with this, right? But all of us struggle with something at times. It's just the way it is. <clears throat> Here we go. Go on up. How do you fight the devil? Submit to who? You don't supposed to take the devil on over there be fighting with the devil straight up. Submit to God. He will fight for you, right? Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he'll do what? He'll lift you up if you humble yourselves. And sometimes it's hard to be humbled. We have to get humbled, right? 
Sometimes we've got to get humbled in our situation. All right, honey, go to Ephesians 4.17. We're going to go through verse 23. All right, this I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance that is in them, and because of the blindness of their heart, who being past filling and have given themselves over to lewdness. The church is not about your feelings. My feelings say this today. Well, my feelings say that. Our feelings can get us in trouble, can't they? Our feelings get us in a lot of trouble because this is how I emotionally feel today. What about tomorrow? You may feel totally different. Well, you don't know what happened to me and how it feels. Man, does Jesus know how it feels? Yeah, I'm going to trust in the Lord's ways, not my ways. My feelings, I can't trust my feelings. My feelings can lead me astray. I'm not saying you can't have feelings. We can share with husband, wife, friends, family, our feelings and what we're going through, but we don't rely on our feelings for... Well, my feelings are saying this right now. My heart's saying I should go have that drink and sleep with this lady. My feelings are saying that I deserve this, right? Will your feelings do that to you? Yes. I mean, you deserve this, girl. Go out and party. You deserve this, right? And those are feelings. That's something from the world. That's not from God. Those are feelings. Those are emotional feelings. That's not of God. Blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in who? Jesus. That you put off concerning your former want. The old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and being renewed in the spirit of your mind. When you're dealing with lust... Your mind needs to be renewed, right? And you better stop and hit reset. And better unplug whatever's going on and stop and go sit down somewhere, get alone, and turn on some worship music, pray, start praying, start fighting, being steadfast, right? Because the enemy has showed up. One little thought and turns into a lot of issues down the road for you. Take control of those thoughts, right? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's every day, church. You've got to get renewed every day. It's not a one-time deal. Well, I got saved four years ago. I haven't been back to church since. Eh, your walk's probably horrible as well. <laughs> and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness. And what? You're going to walk in holiness. You will. That's a byproduct of abiding in Christ. You're going to walk with the Lord. Your life is going to be different. It's going to be seen by people around you. Right, church? Amen? Amen. Don't judge me, pastor. No, I'm just telling you, man, your life's going to be different. Your life will be different, and people will see it. Amen? Let's look at Luke twenty-two thirty-one. 31. Peter was talking a big deal here. And you got Christ who's saying, man, they're going to crucify me. This is going to happen. And Peter's what? Boasting in himself, Right? You know what? I won't let no one take you. I'll die with you. I'm going to fight for you, right? And what's he say? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked to do what? For you, that he may sift you as wheat. You guys see that? But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And look at this verse. You guys see the verse? And when you have returned to me, return to me. Right? He denied Jesus three times, did he not? Lord, I'll never deny you. He denied him three times. Jesus knew before the rooster crowed three times that he would deny him, right? Three times, right? It happens. He knew he would, even though he was boasting. Man, if people ever walk around, I walk with the Lord, I haven't sinned in ten years, man. There ain't nothing coming against me. That person is a liar. That person's lying through their teeth. <laughs> I guarantee, man, they just sinned when they said that. They just sinned when they said it. Every day you're working out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Every day you're working it out. You work it out every day. Because you don't know what's going to happen that day. But I have prayed for you that faith, your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. 
He does. He makes him a leader, right? After you've returned to me, and he returns, and the Lord says, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Peter's getting upset. Lord, you know I love you. Well, he denied him three times. Went, and have you ever, yes, we've denied the Lord with our sin, have we not? Well, it's not that big of a deal. My wife did this to me last week, so she deserves what I'm about to do to her, right? Nope, she doesn't deserve that because you're sinning against God first. You're sinning against your creator first. You're not getting anybody back here. You're sinning against him. <laughs> Dangerous. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Brother Lee, would you like to read that one for me? Hang on, let me get a drink of water. Just start reading. I'll tell you when to stop when you need to. My little children, these things are right to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the proposition for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. <coughs> Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk as he has walked. Brethren, I write no to no new commandment but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light. There is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to your fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked. Did you guys see that? <coughs> or keep going. You little children, because you have known the Father. And I've written to your fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked. Stop right there. Or did you see that right there, church? The word of God abides in you. You have to be able to find some scriptures that propel you forward. You have to have some scriptures that change your life when you get out of bed every day. You have to have something you can grab onto that's a promise from God that you know that's true. And you say, this verse is true, and I'm going to believe this with all that I am. And whenever I face today, I'm going to the Lord's words, man. Just like him fighting with Satan, right? He responded with scriptures. you got to have at least one planted in some good soil, right? At least one scripture that you got to believe, right? we got to be able to have at least one. And it starts with one, right? Because you were strong and the Word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one, right? We have. We're brand new. We've overcome the wicked one. But He's still going to try and, and scheme and trick you and deceive you. It's, he's going to try and get you to question God's authority. Go on up. <coughs> and do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is one. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Stop right there. We either walk in the flesh or the spirit. Most of the time we walk in what? The flesh. Most of the time we do. We're walking in the flesh. We're not thinking about the Lord. We're going to do something else. And something happens. We get into an argument with somebody, right? But if we're walking in the spirit of the Lord, we're walking around, hey, Lord, put somebody in front of me. I want to pray for them. My mindset's already right, huh? They show up and do something. I don't get offended. I remember one day, man, Two different people wanted to fight me in the same day one time. But I led both of them to Jesus that day. And I used to get in a lot of fights <laughs> that day, but my heart was right. I was ready for them. But if I wouldn't have been ready for them, I'd have been in a bad mood or out, right? I mean, I'd have had two fights in the same day. But that's what happens. Your mind and your heart has to be right. It does, because you don't know when that attack's going to come. 
for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, right? The pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust thereof, or the lust of it, but he who does the will of God does one. <coughs> one up. Little children is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, then they would have continued with us. But they went out and that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us, right? But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of want. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also, right? Amen. And let's look at uh, Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. Brother JJ, would you come up here? And Brother Lee, would you come up? <coughs> Come on up here. Hey, Brother Cody, would you come up here? All right. Did he give her some sugar? Okay. Cody, would you wrap this up for me with Revelation 12, 11, what it's about? All three of you guys been go out and do this every day, right? Yep. You go out and share your testimony with the world, right? Yep. Or Cody, you want to share that part? Let me go pray with her. <clears throat> oh, you want this? Here we go. Okay. And they can share as well. If okay. Um, Mom, can you go up a little bit? So first things first, let's pray in the name of Jesus for Jocelyn who's dealing with some diabetic issues, so let's pray for her right now. Heavenly Father, we ask right now, Lord, in one accord, completely in agreement, we ask, mighty God, that you would lay your hand on her right now, God, that she would be restored and that she would be lifted up. Thank you for healing her completely in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for restoring Jocelyn right now to perfect health. In the name of Jesus, be healed, Jocelyn. Amen. Mom, can you go up to verse 10? All right. Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. This is it, right? Christ has come. Here he comes. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So now the accuser of us has been what? cast down. In verse 11, and they, who? God's people. And they overcame him. Who's him? Satan. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Who's the lamb? And the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives even to the death. So, Revelation 12, 11. We're saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. This is great news. We get to go share that. Listen, you may not have all of the Scriptures figured out. I was asked one time at a funeral. They said, hey, do you know the Romans road? Yes, I know the Romans road. Right? And imagine being mechanical every time you share the Gospel. It's not healthy. Right? It's like, not. hey, one size doesn't fit all. Jesus is for everybody, but the way that you share Him, it's different. Jesus has called us, right, to be fishers of men. There's different bait for different people, right? But when I come to, to somebody, do you know what God tells me to do? To show them, according to 1 Peter 2.9, how God has brought me out of darkness and into His marvelous light. We're called out of darkness. So what do I share with the unbeliever? How I became a believer. I share with them how I was darkness, not in darkness. I was darkness, and now how I'm in the light now, 
right? How I was dead, but now I'm alive. How I was lost, but now I'm found. Listen, it's, I could tell you, I get to share with tons of people just as well as these men do, and I'm sure just as well as some of you get to as well, right? What kind of testimony is that that you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that's been made free by Jesus Christ? kind of a testimony is that? Well, hey, I know somebody. Hey, you know what? You need to talk to my pastor. Why can't they talk with you? Hey, I got this friend, bro. He's, oh man, super religious. You ought to talk to him. He could probably, you know, answer your questions. No. You tell him. But it's hard to tell somebody about somebody you don't know. But if you know him, you can't stop telling about him or talking about Him. There's no way. So we're called to go out and to share our testimony. To go out into the highways and byways. Right, Brother Lee? Luke 14. To go bring them in. And listen, the powerful testimony of what Jesus did on our behalf as guilty sinners, how He went to the cross on our behalf, it was because of us, but for us. Right? He was delivered for our offenses, but raised again to our justification. You could share that, Romans 4.25. You could share that verse, but what does it mean to you? He was delivered from my offenses like what? I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I wanted to kill people for money. I had a porn addiction from age seven. I cheated on my wife with three different women. I ran from the cops twice smoking dope. Drunk driving accident throughout. The list goes on. He was delivered for all my offenses, for all my wrongdoings. But what's grace do? Grace makes all of my wrongs right. Because somebody else paid the penalty and the debt for them. So now I stand innocent and guiltless. And I can't be proven guilty in the sight of Almighty God. Because somebody else has on my behalf went and took my penalty, took my punishment, and all of yours as well. And Jesus was nailed to that wooden cross. On our behalf, he was delivered for our offenses. But when he resurrected from the grave, it was for our justification. All that that simply means is this, is Jesus' body was the check that was signed and filled out. And when Jesus resurrected, that check cleared the bank. If Jesus would have never resurrected from the grave, that check would have bounced and you would all still be in your sins, just like me. But Jesus resurrected from the grave and did exactly what He said He was going to do. And He paid for exactly what He said He was going to pay for. And now on the side of God, He's gone on our behalf to stand in the presence of Almighty God. And now we stand innocent. Our debt has been paid in full. So now what do we do? We go out and tell the whole world about that. And I'll let these brothers share some of that too. Uh, Broly, you could share something. So my past is, is been set, I've been set free from my past, right? I'm forgiven. I'm been redeemed. My Redeemer lives and He's redeeming me every single day. I don't live in my past. My past doesn't live in me anymore. I'm a new man. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I've been born again, right? I've been set free like Cody was saying from all those things that I once was. That old man's dead, he's gone, he's been buried. Jesus took all that old man to the cross and it died with him on the cross to be remembered no more. As far as the east is to the west and to the depths of the sea, the Word of God says, never to be remembered again. I've been set free, forgiven, right? And that same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is raising me also. And one day He's going to raise me to the Father Himself and with Him. And we're going to rejoice. And we're going to live with Him forever. Rule and reign in a new earth. Right? In a new heaven. So I'm no longer that old man. And now I'm walking in the newness of Christ. He says to walk in the light as I am the light. And how do I do that? It's His light, not mine. He's shining in me. Right? I didn't have that light before. I was dark. I was alienated from God. But now I'm in the light as He is in the light. Right? The Word of God says that if you abide in Him, He will abide in you. Amen? So what do we do in the morning when we wake up? 
give God the praise. Tell him thank you for this day. Right? He's given us another day. Another day for what? To do that work in us. So that we can go out and do his work. And to tell others what he's done in us. And what he's done in us, he can do in you. God's no respecter of persons. We all bleed the same. Right? Amen? Amen. So, um, as I would sit down there in the pulpit, you know, or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, out there, I would still um, come to church all the time knowing that I'm still a sinner, knowing that I'm going to still leave here and go and still live in my sin, you know, and confidently sit down there as if I'm listening to everything that Pastor Brian or Pastor Cody is saying or, um, for that matter, Brother Lee, you know, or anybody that would speak to me, you know, as if I'm confidently listening to what they're saying, but in all reality, I was thinking about my sin, what I was going to do when I left here, you know. Um, just because, again, I didn't care. I wanted to play the part for everybody, you know. Play a, a different part, a different role for every single person that sat inside here. Because, again, when you're a trickster, when you live in the world, when you live for deceiving not only yourself every single day, because that's the first person you deceive. You look in the mirror and you deceive that person. And so I would come here and think, okay, well, i got to deceive these people. I don't want these people to figure me out. I don't want these people to know me and know who I am. So as I would sit down there and listen to everybody that would minister to me and hear, you know, uh, um, uh, Pastor Cody's testimony or Pastor Brian's testimony or anybody in here's testimony and just think in my head, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you know, God did that for you, but he won't do it for me. If I'm being honest with you guys, there's times I'll sit right there and listen and I will go home and try to disprove that God even existed. If I'm being honest with you, that's just the truth. And... So now to actually, you know, July 5th, God to completely come in and, and just talk to me audibly and completely just shake me up and show me like, well, first off, I do exist, you know, and let me tell you how you've been living, you know, let me tell you everything that you thought you was getting away with. Let me, let me share with you that I've seen everything, you know, and just completely brought me to my knees, you know, and so since that day, it's like, man, like. I want to go and tell everybody. I want to go and tell God, you know, tell everybody what God did for me. Because, again, if I'm being transparent with the entire church, here's the thing. I'm not afraid of being judged by anybody in here because, again, you know, like God set me free. So whatever you guys feel about me, it doesn't matter. That's fine. You know, um, for 12 years, every opportunity that I got, you know, and I want to make sure to look, make eye contact with everybody in the church. As I say that every opportunity I got to cheat on my wife, I cheated on my wife and I did not care. I was only looking out for me, for JJ. And now my wife is my best friend, praise God. We go and we go to the bluffs every opportunity that we get every day and we go and share our testimony with every single person that's out there and we tell them what God has done in our life. But more importantly, like Pastor Cody said, we let them see what God has done in our lives by our fruits. So if a person is walking past me, I'm quick to tell them, hey, praise God. How are you doing today? You know, praise God. Before, I didn't have that boldness. But when you hang around with somebody like this guy right here, you just get that boldness, you know. <laughs> and so, again, you know, not only has Pastor Cody been rubbing off on me, you know, uh, or Pastor Brian or Brother Lee, but more importantly, this word right here has been rubbing off on me. And it's just starting to show. So I just I praise God. I glorify him every single day because of the work that he continues to do for the people that he put in my path. To, to talk to anybody, you know, like God has given me such a boldness, you know, to go and just talk to anybody, you know. If I got a question, I'll hit up Brother Lee. Hey, Brother Lee, what you think about this? Or, hey, Cody, what you think about this? And even if they tell me what they think, I will still go back to this word and I will still start doing my research. Because, again, that's what God has called us to do. He's called us to live into this in this Bible. He's called us to live in this word. And so, again, we see what's going on in these other countries, how they're trying to get rid of this word right here, how they're trying to distort this word right here. So there may come a day where we don't have a Bible. Well, I want to write that word in my heart. I want to write it in my heart. So if somebody comes across my path, I can tell them what God has done for me. I can show them by the way that I live what God has done for me. And praise God. Again, I, I didn't think that Brother Paul was going to make it tonight. You know, but God made a way. So that's uh, that's evidence right there that God is always moving. 
When I'm asleep, he moving. You know, when I'm having a bad day, he's still moving. He is always moving. We serve a glorious God. We serve a great God. Amen. 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 <clears throat> hey, something I want to share with you guys. So praise the Lord, what God is doing, right? I could tell you, when you think about the Scriptures, Jesus, right, He gives these talents. You guys have heard the parable of the talents, right? He gives one, one. He gives you another two. He gives you another five, right? And tells them to go do something with it. Well, the last thing I want to do is go put what God has given me in the dirt and cover it up and never touch it until the king comes back and says, oh yeah, here's, here's what you gave me, right? No, I want to be like the faithful one with two. It's like, hey, I went and multiplied it. You gave me two, I got two more. Oh, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful a little. Let me make you ruler over much. The same with the five, right? He went out and multiplied it, got five more. That's what I want to do. And I'll tell you guys, so something that, you know, talking with, you know, my dad last night, talking about calling somebody. So last night, so I shouldn't even be here today at church. I should be at home. And the reason being is because, and again, full transparent, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up, right? So last night on the way home, for some, I don't know what it was, but everybody's driving sucked bad, right? Driving up the hill, everybody's doing 50 in the fast lane. And my problem is, is I just want to do the speed limit. Please just do the speed limit. If you're not going to do the speed limit, please get out of the fast lane. Go to the slow lane. Like, please move, right? And so that in California is consistent. That's what happens. I'm not making excuses. So I spent majority of my drive, that's an hour, complaining about everybody else's driving. That was like 52, 55 miles an hour. Or then they would get side by side and they'd be pacing a truck, doing one of these all the way up the hill. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Anyways, so I went to that place, and I remember sitting there, well, because it's like one truck after another truck, so if you guys know anything about Highway 58, I'm a professional on Highway 58 because I drive it, um, the diesels will hop out in front of you and literally go a nice 32, 35 miles an hour in the fast lane up the hill. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I can't, they can't move, and then you, it's always fun when you have the other diesel that's like not letting him pass. And so we're doing a cool like 38, you know what I'm saying? And we're doing one of these, oh man, frustrated. So last night without fail, it's like from Bakersfield all the way up to Tatchby, I was complaining about everybody's driving. Well, about this time I'm like, man, another truck hops in front of me, okay, cool. Another truck, okay, cool. And I'm not the guy that's like trying to eat the paint off of their bumper. I'm like sitting back like, okay, here we go again. And without fail, people start driving crazy. And so last night I ended up having a guy right before I got to Tehachapi, you know, um, I'm driving up and next thing you know, um, the guy that was behind me, because everybody's pacing each other, we can't go very fast, we're finally going and he goes like, and here's a truck right here and like I'm rolling, I'm probably, I don't know how fast I was doing, but I'm getting up to the speed limit and he tries to come in right there and then gets right up behind me. So I was like, okay, cool. I hop out of the fast lane in between two trucks to let him go and just something just snapped. I ended up, so long story short is I did 90 miles an hour behind this guy on his bumper wishing that I could put hands on him. Wishing. All the while, my helper in this passenger seat says, you're covered in Jesus right now. And so it's just like, got home. I took every single magnet off my vehicle. I took my magnets off my vehicle and I took all of my license plates cover, covers off my vehicle. If I'm not gonna drive right, if I'm gonna disrespect and dishonor my God, if I'm not gonna obey the speed limit and I'm gonna drive like that, I will not bring dishonor to my God. So I took everything off and I put it there. My kids were blown away. My kids were looking at me like, Daddy, what's wrong? Daddy, why are you doing this? I was like, no, I'm not gonna dishonor God. I just disrespected him. What do you think? Listen, none of those people on that road know me. You know who I was representing? Jesus Christ. I've tried to give magnets to some people. They won't do it, but it's simply because they're not willing to drive right. And I get it. I get it. After yesterday, when I got home and I said, I'm ripping every single one of them off, I called my dad on the phone. I said, Dad, I'm not going to church tomorrow. I was supposed to go to a men's breakfast in McFarland today. 
I'm not doing that either. I'm not driving. My wife drove me here today. Darlene does not drive at all. So the 99,100 miles that's on that, I drove that. Darlene doesn't like driving on the highway. She doesn't like driving on that, right? So every single time, three to four times a week, when I'm driving here, driving back, it's a constant temptation. There's a constant trial. Nope, I don't flip them off. I don't cuss. I don't anything like that. But you know what I do? In my heart, I'm angry. In my heart, I'm bitter. So I'm committing murder against them. I don't even know them, but it's because of their driving. So I got frustrated. So I remember sitting there and all last night, man, I was jacked last night. I just remember laying in bed. I was like, I don't even think I'll be able to go to sleep. I went to my room and cried out to God in repentance because of my actions and the way that I was driving. Listen, nope, I don't know of a Bible verse that says uh, you shall uh, not exceed 65 miles per hour. But I'm going to tell you what, you have been called to be above reproach. You've been called to be a light, a city that's set in a hill that cannot be hid. And so if there's anything that anybody in this world wants to do is to be able to point at you and say, say see, look at you. Look at you. So I failed last night horribly. So by the time I got home, like I said, I ripped everything off my vehicle. I literally pulled out my screwdriver. It's like 10 or 11 a night coming from prayer meeting. Out there with the screwdriver, pulling off all my license plate stuff, pulling off everything. I almost took one of those little things to... Brother Lee built me a decal for the back of my window. I took him off my car. I said, I'll, start, I'll scrape that off later. I'll remove everything off my vehicle. If I'm not going to drive right, if I'm not going to honor God by the way that I'm operating my vehicle and not being a witness there or a testimony there, I'm not doing it. And that could go into your life. That can go with the t-shirts. That could go with everything. If you're not going to honor God by the things that you're doing, don't bring dishonor to His name. That's my thing. And I failed hard. So as I went to bed and I woke up and I'm just like, man, I'm just not going to do it. The brother who I was supposed to go to McFarland to see him this morning to go to that men's breakfast in McFarland, uh, out of nowhere, he didn't know I was coming. I was just going to surprise him. Go see all the brothers over there. He sends me a text and he says, hey, praying for you, asking God to send ministering angels, asking Him to come protect you wherever you're at, whatever's going on. And I was like, oh, amen. He doesn't know nothing. And then as I'm sitting there studying the Scriptures, just trying to seek God, you know, thinking like, man, I'm, I just don't want to drive anymore. I just, whatever. And in my mind, I'm not even coming to Bakersfield today. I'm just not going to drive. I'm not going to drive. And my dad asked me a question last night. He's like, so how are you going to get to work? Who's going to drive you to work? Right? And so I was like, I, I don't have that answer right now. But I just don't want to drive anymore. I don't want to put myself continuously in that same predicament. I just want to step out of it. Right? If somebody's dealing with something, what do you do? You step out. You get out of that situation. You remove yourself from it. So... I, I just felt it on my heart to give that brother a call, and that brother's like, it's by no coincidence, you know, and he encouraged me, and he's like, bro, you better get outside, and you better put every single magnet back on that vehicle, bro. And he says, and you better go whatever, whatever, and he's like, just praying for me, encouraging me, sharing with me, right? And I was like, man. And so, at the end of the day, um, put all the magnets on, Darlene drove me here today, and Darlene's going to drive me home tonight, and Darlene doesn't want to at all, but she's going to do that for me. Because if, if she's not driving, I'm staying in Bakersfield tonight. I'm at that place where something needs to happen. So I've come to repentance. I'm walking in a place of repentance. So even talking about tonight, I don't want to live there. I don't want to do that ever again. I don't ever want to do that. I don't ever want to bring shame or dishonor to my God because I love Him more than anything or anyone. I love Jesus Christ more than my children. I love Jesus Christ more than my wife. I love Jesus Christ more than all you guys. Jesus says, if I'm not first, you can't have me. Jesus says, if you put anything before me, you're not worthy of me. So, newsflash, I suck and I failed. Seriously, it's not okay and it's not cool. That's what I dealt with. That's what I struggled with. I struggled with last night. Lord willing, it will never ever happen again. And I think that the only way for that to happen is to never drive. God will work it out. If my, drive, my wife drive, literally chauffeurs me around and do whatever I have to do, that's what's going to happen. But I'm not going back to that place because I love God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. God's taking care of it. Well, you're in a good place because you're in a place of repentance. And we all fall short. Every one of us will fall short. We think that we're up there and we're doing good. We fall short sometimes. 
And the thing is, we get back up. But don't just get back up and go back to do and abuse God's grace and use it as a as a free ticket to go do that again. Because that's not God's grace. And if the grace of God and the love of God and the Spirit of God is dwelling in you, then you're going to get to that place of laying down on your face before God and saying you're sorry and truly being sorrowful. And that godly sorrowness is what leads us to repentance, which leads to godliness and holiness. And then you're going to get back up. And you will get back up. You will go be an ambassador for Christ because that's what God's called you to do. And you will drive that man. And so. And trust me, while Darlene was driving today, I couldn't say a word. I couldn't say how her speed, I couldn't talk. I just couldn't. I knew I had to be tight lipped. I was like, you ain't saying nothing because this is where you're at right now. So it's like, I'm not saying nothing, not a word. So most of the trip, I just closed my eyes and sat in the passenger seat. Not, not just wanting to look, not wanting to just, I'm just going to be quiet. Because if not, I'm going to be talking. And that's not my place. And that's what she said. You better not say a word. Right? So I'm like sitting, <laughs> like sitting there on the way to Bakersfield. I was like, oh, man. Good thing I got this. <laughs> and she's not in here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is awesome. So anyways, hey, real talk. Please keep, please keep me in prayer about that. So, so I'm fully transparent. You guys know me. You've been, if you've been in this church long enough, you know that if, I'm, if there's something in my life that's not right, I'm going to tell the whole church. I'm not giving the enemy any ground. And so please keep me in prayer that um, God would give me victory in that place. All right? Jesus is... Huh? Do you remember when you used to have a, uh, a Apple Watch? Yeah. And you did the same exact thing with the Apple Watch, but you overcame it is the point. Yeah. You know? So you told yourself that you started getting consumed with the Apple Watch. I always wanted to track, and we were sharing it with each other. And But again, you bounced back from that. So again, you in the, you in the perfect place. You where God wants you at. You know? so Absolutely. You make it out of this room. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right.